What TV shows are you watching? Oh, God. We, you know, we were just talking about uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith on okay. Amazon. I'm, I'm enjoying that. Which you can see here on Roku. That's right. I'm okay. uh, partway uh, through that one. I'm watching, uh, in, on the reality tip, I'm watching uh, Love is Blind with mm. my girlfriend and Vanderpump Rules, which as a L.A. resident is kind of like a local show. Mm. Um, and I'm on a Mad Men we watch. Oh, right now. Rewatch. okay. Rewatch, yeah. Yeah, the rewatches are good. I did a whole Sopranos rewatch oh, over great. the summer. Well done. Um, all the way through. All the way through. Oh, God, man. Um, and the last season for me was a, the most disturbing watch because I knew what was coming. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so we're watching it through for the first time. You know, it, there was a little bit of pins and needles. Yeah. It was more difficult knowing what's coming. What's your favorite? Because I, I just wanted him to just stop his behavior because he was, he was causing his... Are we talking about John or are we talking no, about... No, about Tony. Tony Soprano? Yeah. I, let me ask you, how do you... The finale now yes. that we're years past it. Yes. How do you feel about it? I love it. Yeah. I, I kind of dig it. Yeah. I, at the time, though, I was pissed for two Same. reasons. One, I wanted resolution. Yeah. Two, uh, we were hosting it in our house with a whole bunch of people. And when, <laughs> yes. it, when it went black, <laughs> the whole room turned to me, including my wife. Yeah. Like, did you not pay the bill? Yeah, yeah. Like, what happened? Did you forget to pay the, the, Excuse me. the bill here? And I'm like, hey, everybody, I don't know what's going on. The TV's dark for an absurd number of times. Like, it was that long where people were turning, looking at each other, and then turned to me like it was my fault. Yeah. Um, what about you? I. Uh, you like it now or no? I you? think it's brilliant now. And I had a, a, the same reaction at the time. I was living in a studio apartment, like, uh, former motel and it was v very possible that I didn't pay the bill. Like when it went off, I was like, was oh, a, I legitimately didn't. Uh, the bed wasn't coin operated, was it, Jason? <laughs> it was that kind of, <laughs> it was that kind of spot. It was the kind of place that, you know, uh, when it had the motel signs out front. Yes. Would have said like, we have color we, TVs. It's <laughs> it's the, On the marquee. Yeah. 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 Nice. Um, but now I think, <laughs> holy cow, it's um, the fact that we're still talking about it. Right. The uh, the way it makes you think about all the things that might happen to Tony. Forget what happened to him in that moment. Mm -hmm. That guy's waiting. He's going to be there, whether it's then in that diner after a month later, that guy's going to be there at some point. The way it made me think about that, I just think it's it's brilliant. Well, it's just so difficult to end a long running show. It really is. Coming up with something that is not it's only... Hard satisfying in terms of uh, plot conclusion, yeah. but also just watchability, where it's it true. still has the same sensibility of the hit, of the most, the lion's share of the hit years. Yeah, it's really hard. So, I mean, I, I, I bring up Lost. Lost had one of the best first seasons oh, ever. Ever. Where it was groundbreaking, mind-blowing, and then I just don't know what the hell happened after that. Um, I mean, what what would you say is one of the more satisfying? Oh gosh! Final seasons of a show where they got it right. Even you, you, Chris, um, curses Game of Thrones now after curses. after loving it for Ready as long Jason. as he did. Ready, Jason? I wish I never watched it. No, come on, complete Chris. waste of time. No, the final you season of Game of Thrones it was so bad, so no. upset him. Here's the deal: so as, as great as the first seasons were, sure. that's how equally bad the last season was. He won't. He won't even give House of Dragons a try because House of Dragons is great. I, I enjoy it they too. By the me. way, I am the official pod, co podcast co-host of House of Dragon on okay. HBO. Get well it wherever your podcast. Nice. And so take this with a grain of salt, but I, but it's great. I'll, you know, here's the thing about Game of Thrones, uh, the final season. I, uh, first of all, I think up until Night of the Seven Kingdoms, brilliant episode, made me weep, even up to the uh, Winterfell episode, great season. I think for me, the fact that people cared that much is part of the magic of television. I enjoyed the ride. I understand people were disappointed by it. I, I, I loved the ride. Of course, it, it was, was a great, tremendous thing for for he's me also personally. The, he's also the type of guy, and they say here all the time. Yeah. Well, I, sh I'm not, I don't want to go there about would you rather be blown out oh, or, sure, or sure. In, your, in it, or would you rather just lose it a just close one? But, like no, they but got just, sloppy and they just kind of rushed it, and it was unnecessary. They could have taken 
as much time as they wanted. HBO would have given them all the runway they needed. And they're like, no, 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 we're good. We're going to do it in six, seven episodes, whatever. Why? Well, they they also didn't have the, the source so material. Yeah. By the way, they didn't have the source material to work George. off of. Ah, uh, George. We're still waiting. We're waiting we on waiting. pages. We've been waiting 14 years Number of years times now. that I see him write about the Jets instead of, like, finishing this damn, <laughs> know. you know, I am on the, saga. I say, I'm, we're, we're going to get, uh, we're going to get the next book. Okay. I believe that. I, I'll say <laughs> and, that. And what, <laughs> what happens first? The Knicks win a championship or we get this final book? Oh. Man, I'll tell you what. The championship thing, I would have had a different answer <laughs> before yeah, this know, right? season. Look out. Uh, well, you know, speaking of land, uh, sticking the landing, Mad yes. Men, I think one of the most I perfect agree. buttoned up. I thought the final episode of that was amazing. Amazing. And how and how they tied it into one of the more famous yeah. TV commercial campaigns of all time and how he would come up with it. Yeah. I did enjoy that. You know, it's another one as well. Um, I don't know if you watched the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Did you ever watch I that? Didn't, I didn't get into it's, Maisel. Uh, listen. It is a spectacular television show. Okay. And the final, it's the act, the acting, the writing um, is spectacular. And, you know, straight up, I, I will watch Rachel Brosnahan read, read a, a phone book. Um, but the last season is perfect. It's truly one of the greatest final seasons I will, I've ever seen. It's satisfying. It gives you a storyline. It brings yeah. seasons together. It's moving. It's hilarious. The final scene is perfect. It's great. Seinfeld? Go. Seinfeld, um, it, you know, the... It made me laugh. I know it made you laugh. You know the final ep the final episode, the two-parter? Yep, yeah. Absolutely. It was funny. Uh-huh. But it was, like, goofy, kind of like the whole show was. I tend to skip everything about season nine of Seinfeld. I just oh, kind oh, wow. of don't even. Uh, I I go I, to that I, I have zero complaints about Seinfeld. Zero, yeah. and I will never have a single complaint about Seinfeld. I'm trying to get my oldest son to start watching it because he loves comedies. He loves mm. Thirty Rock. He watched the he binge watched yeah. all of Modern Family. He loves Only Murders in the Building, and I'm like, you would love yeah. Seinfeld. And then I'm like thinking to myself. How would he understand a payphone episode? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That's like, wait a minute. They, they miscommunicated because they couldn't get in contact with each other? Like, what? That's right. You had to that? kind of change. As I'm Snapchatting away. You know, like, it, it, yeah. there, there are some interesting moments like that. What did you think of the Succession finale? I, I, I loved it. Me too. Uh, just a show that I was, that really grabbed me. I'm proud to say I was there from season one. Me too. Uh, even through the shakiness up to, you know, when it really took off in the middle of that season, I just, one of the most high quality seasons. Like a that, rocket ship, by like the way. Like a rocket like, ship. I, I remember the first couple episodes of Succession, my wife and I were watching it, and we're like, why do we care about yeah. any of these people? <laughs> They're, They're all so terrible. Awful, yeah. Terrible yeah. human beings. There's nothing yeah. that wants me to be sticking around uh, at all because they're such horrible yeah. people. And I forget what episode it was, but it was so fantastic. And it it kept on going straight up like a rocket ship is the only analogy. Yeah. And I've never seen a show that's supposedly a drama that's made me laugh out loud more than that's, Succession. I think for me it was getting used to the visual language because it is a dark comedy. <laughs> you are You are watching these people... At their worst, it makes it's one of those few shows about wealth that makes wealth look like a terrible time. Yes. Uh, and once I figured out, oh, this isn't a drama. They're shooting it this way for a reason. And and the, then the performances really started to get to me. And for me, I think it was that episode where um, where Tom and Greg go to that weird restaurant and they eat the birds with the with the napkins over their heads mm. so that you could. <laughs> I forget what it, the turn of phrase, like soak in their misery mm -hmm. of these small birds or something like that. And I was just like, wow, this is, show is crushing it. it. How about this for it? Uh, stuck the landing eastbound and down. <laughs> I didn't see the final season yeah. of that. I, I admit you're, you're already laughing over there. I'm just laughing because the whole idea of that show is so absurd. It's and so the absurd. performances, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, yeah. of, of but, Danny McBride and everyone involved but is the, so ridiculous. But the character of Tom Wamsgans from oh, Succession is, if you had to have like a Mount Rushmore oh. of characters yeah. who makes you stop whatever you're doing because every appearance they have 
is the phrase I like to use is like cotton candy. They they steal the scene. They're funny. They're brilliant. The, uh, I, I would put him on there. Um, to use your Mad Men phrase, Roger Sterling. Oh, I love Roger Sterling. Anytime yeah. his character shows up, uh, um, John Slattery plays him. Yeah. Uh, uh, I guess Al Swearingen from oh, Deadwood. Anytime he would show up on oh, the I screen, mean, Tyrion Lannister. I, I, that's I, I, that's, I, that's, yeah. that's a good foursome yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah, you know that's a good foursome right there. Where just anytime they show up, it's a showstopper. You know you're going to get a line that's going to exactly. kill you. And then Succession just re- reached the pantheon of of a pop culture uh, iconic show because it, it filters into your mind. When other things happen in life, yeah. just yesterday we were in our text exchange explaining uh, Sean Mitchell, who is at home right now, uh, our digital coordinating producer who tracks everything on the show. He texted us that there's a moon landing. Yeah. First time in decades coming up. And we start texting. He's like, I hope Roman Roy isn't in charge of it. <laughs> you know, and then we start texting around. I think Hoskins put on our, our text exchange or that that scene where he's watching it on his la- on his computer screen. You know, all the emails coming through, you know, that's how Succession is taken over, you know. And for me, you know, that show, Tom in particular, uh, you know, in the in this in the media, the corporate space of media. Yeah. There's always a person like Whamsgans where you're like, you're going to survive. Whatever happens, <laughs> yeah. the nuclear bomb we hits this people. industry. We know them. I, could, <laughs> we know I know Mount Rushmore. Yeah. <laughs> the nuclear bomb hits this industry. We're McAfee all called gone. one out. <laughs> You're oh, going to wow. be here. I just said it. Wow. Yeah, yeah no, no doubt. Yeah. That, that you happens. You have that instinct to be near the thing that will keep you safe yeah. and allow you to succeed. Uh, and that just resonates with me. What an incredible character. Oh, Great. man. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.